Welcome everybody to Virgil's studio and I am Virgil and this is the studio and the mic. Hello. Okay, that's a nice bass drum, isn't it? You guys. You guys hear the natural reverb in there? That's the springs on this, um, what do you call this? It's not a gooseneck. It's a crane neck whatever like to thank everybody for joining me today uh before i forget please don't forget to subscribe while you're here yes i i live off of subscribers man you guys are awesome i appreciate it um what uh what we're doing today what are we doing today we're actually going to uh look at some file management things with cubase no matter what version of cubase you're on uh, took a little while getting used to this and I'm going to show you guys how to do this. I'd also like to uh, I think the next video I'm probably going to just show you how to make a really cool template for yourself. But um, if you're brand new at Cubase, uh, this is some good things for you to know. Some some knowledge I'm passing on, some experience with um, being able to save files and everything. And uh, as soon as you understand the uh, file structure and how Cubase works, if you know the innards of this a little bit then uh, your life will become a lot easier. Okay, so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go to uh, one of my default ones, and I think it's this guy right here because uh, this is how it's gonna feed into OBS Studio, which is uh, what I'm recording in right now. Uh, so if I wanna play anything, it's actually going to um, you know, feed through this little uh, patch that I have in there that makes them talk to each other okay so if you notice uh, as soon as I hit this little template of mine it says set project folder and it's going into uh, this PC music D that's my D hard drive Cubase projects 2023 and then I have this folder called testing facility okay this testing facility folder you should make one and you could call it anything you want the sandbox uh, uh, <laughs> you know uh, the lab that sounds cool uh, freaky experimental room 306 uh, right so you just come up with a cool name that you want mine has been testing facility and we're gonna talk about this and the reason why we have this all right so I'm gonna hit just uh, I'm just gonna go to select folder and then what it's going to do is it's going to go ahead and load up um, my kind of like a little default template that I tend to lean towards all the time. And again, uh, this is the uh, this is going this is going through Restream. Um, uh, this is a little free plugin that you could get. Uh, it's the Restream standalone. And then uh, that's also running in uh, OBS Studio, so I could actually be filming these things. Uh, so. It's actually going to feed my stuff through there. Uh, we're not going to go into all that because uh, that's on a need to know basis. And I'd have to kill you if I told you. Just kidding. I would never do that. But I'd tickle, tickle you to death with a, uh, a feather. That's what I would do. So um, and then this guy just kind of opens up to let me know that um, he's in there. <laughs> so um, the first thing is, is. When I go to create a file, um, I usually just treat everything kind of like a, a testing facility because I don't know if uh, it's going to actually pan out into a song. What we're going to do is we're going to just do a little uh, testing. I have no idea what I'm doing piano wise because it's way down underneath my hands and uh, and under the it's under the desktop the the actual desk here, and I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds like a lovely chord, and I have no idea what I'm doing, but I just want to record something here, okay? So whatever I did there, we'll just say that this is a masterpiece, or it's a piece of junk. If I want to save this, and let's say I, I put some more work into this, and it sounds really good, I go, you know what? This sounds like something I could start working into... Uh, um, a piece here right uh, a song that I want to kind of like go farther on as soon as I decide that 
what I need to do is take this file and I need to do something here. Uh, one of the things that gets tricky is, and I'm going to show you something. Let's put one other thing in here. Let's go with, uh, we're going to go with this vocal line in three. I'm going to get a little voice in here. Let's see if this records. So let's, I guess I have a vocal here. Frank Zappa would be proud of me. Okay, so now I've got an audio file that's connected with this. What happens is in Cubase, in the little Cubase world, um, especially since you're new at this, I'm guessing, um, what it's done is, is it has this folder structure, right? And within that folder structure, I'm going to show you exactly what's going on here. So when I go into this Cubase projects, I'm going to go into uh, 2023. And I'm going to go down to testing facility. When I go into my um, audio file of testing facility, this is going to have a bunch of audio files in here. Okay. Including this one that I just did. Okay. There's a bunch of garbage ones in here, whatever, but it actually is going to reside in here. And here's where things get a little tricky. If I were to just keep on making songs and just go uh, save it as a different name, you know, inside of uh, Cubase projects, I'm going to keep on saving them as different names. They're actually going to all feed into this one big, huge audio folder. Uh, and it's going to start looking like this after a little while, right? This thing can actually be uh, douched out of here. I could actually get rid of all these. I don't need any of these. However, um, what it does is it actually just feeds that into there. And how do we know this? Well, let me show you, kids. If you hit Control P, this is going to give you your pool. This is showing you your, your audio pool. These are all different audio files that you have recorded. And if I open this up, it's saying vocal line right here. And it's also going to tell me if I go out here far enough, look at this. This is telling me where the path is of this track that I just recorded. And it will stay there no matter where I save this song to. Let me repeat myself. Let me repeat myself. No matter where I save this song. And if I go like file up here and then I go save as and then I start going like into my documents for instance and I call it Virgil's new music folder in my documents what's going to happen with that is it's going to keep this audio file over here in testing facility that's how Cubase works so if you kind of understand that little concept there then the testing facility makes all the sense in the world why is this well, I'm glad you asked because now I've got this vocal line that's attached to this file here and I'm saving this and I want to start creating things. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go to file. Watch this carefully. I'm going to go backup project. That's what I'm going to do. And then if I go to Cubase projects and I make a new folder and let's say I'm going to just I want to show you how I do this. OK, guys. So I got the 20, uh, 20, uh, four. We're going to say I'm making a 2024 project and you guys are going to use 2023 because that's actually what, what I, what I would have. Um, and it's what I have and where I'm building up stuff. And I'm going to start making new folders in here and I'm going to call this new folder. This is going to be song one. It's a number one. I'm going to do a little dash there a little hyphen and I'm gonna call it this uh, I'm gonna call this alpha we'll call it the alpha blues how does that sound so now that I've um, had this what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna highlight the name right here because I had hit enter on my keyboard control C now that's copied. This may seem a little complex, but just go through this a couple times. As soon as you do this a couple times, then you're gonna be all set. I'm gonna go select folder, and then I'm gonna control V right there. So this is called alpha blues and hit okay. So now we've got this different file. And if I go like this and I hit the control P again, 
this should be telling me that I have this, this is in a new folder now. How cool is that? So it's gonna take all the audio files, everything, and it's gonna combine it and put them all in one place. That's a really good thing for folder uh, and file maintenance structure, whatever you wanna call it, trying to keep things clean and just make sure you've got this organized thing going on as opposed to, well, this is saved here, that's saved there. Because trust me, you're gonna get really mad someday when you go to do a backup of all those little songs that you have and you didn't back up that audio folder, it's gonna say, hey, where's your audio files? It was in this folder and you'll be like, oh damn, I deleted that because I didn't watch Virgil's video. Just kidding, sorry, didn't mean to scream at you or scare your pets or your fish. Fish aren't really pets, they're actually bait. Um, so as you go through this and you'll see this, it's gonna make sense to you. Now I have this uh, file in here and then when I go to do my next file, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. And I don't have to go through making the you know 2024 number one, but I do have to go in sequential order. And I wanna, I wanna number my songs that I'm going through and I'll do this each year. So as I go through each year of my uh, different songs, you're gonna see as I go to, uh, I'm gonna open up uh, 2022 here for you, okay? You're gonna see some uh, other things up here. Uh, this main one called mastering, this is really important for me too because I take all my songs and I master them out to here so I can see the names of my songs that I did in 2022. Now, usually what I'm gonna do too is I'm gonna give a, uh, uh, sometimes they're going to be WAV files. Sometimes I'm going to do a separate one that's going to be MP3s. Like right here, it says MP3s. So as you go through here, you're going to see how these all propagated in here. And boom, I've got my MP3s for that year too, right? Uh, so now in 2022, you can see this, my first song was a song called Watch Your Step. Look at the size of this. It's 200. 93 megabytes there ain't no way on the planet earth that that's going to be just midi files right so you know that there's going to be some kind of audio file in here okay uh so i got the audio file in there i've got different versions of the file let's talk about that really quick and uh we're probably probably just end this today with this next thing when i'm working on a particular file a lot of times um you know just for general housekeeping purposes I'm going to, uh, every time I go in there to kind of work on a file, I will, especially if I'm doing big changes to it, I'm gonna just go file, then I'm gonna go save as a new version. Because this way, it's gonna, it's gonna lock in this version where I know that, oh yeah, this is where I put the drums at. And you can keep copious notes on here if you like. I usually have a pretty good idea what I'm gonna do when I'm doing stuff like that. And I could always revisit an older version. Um, so that should help you with just uh, starting out files and saving your files in Cubase. It's, it's just really, really important to do it that way because like I said, if you don't, you're gonna have everything filling up in this one folder that gets everything just really hard to manage, you know? Uh, because this ends up being about file management. Trust me, down the road, you're gonna wish you had done it this way. And this is how you're gonna be able to access your files uh, pretty quickly. So. Hope you all enjoyed today's lesson and be nice to each other. Have a great day.